Hey, I hope you enjoyed part one. Let's go to part two. Check out what else we can see. All right, this guy is going to give us a tour. I figure, hey, let's learn a little bit about it. Well, um, let's start over here, guys. Right. Sometimes you lose them, sometimes you don't. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes you even find them. So, anybody military? Anybody been in the military? No? I always ask that because I, I had an admiral with me one time and I didn't ask. And uh, he didn't like some of the things they were saying. Mm. I didn't like that. Family, okay. grandfathers and stuff I have, but that, that's, that's close enough. <laughs> okay, we're in hangar bay number one. There's three hangar bays on this ship. This is the garage. This was where planes were worked on. And once they were ready to fly, we would take them over here and put them on the elevator. And that's what this is. Come over here and take a look. This is a center line elevator. It's in the up position. So this is the elevator platform. This platform weighs 72 tons. And it's attached to cables, which go down the next deck to a hydraulic engine. And the hydraulic fluid is pushed by compressed air, not pumped, compressed air. So we have three elevators. They are all run off compressed air, and they all run off the same we still have the original compressor, but unfortunately it gave up a few years ago. It built us out of the room. We replaced it with a modern one about like this, and it runs the ball just as well. So the, the technology on compressors has improved. Drop time from here to here, eight seconds. Now this thing has carried 25,000 pounds of airplanes, and in the early days that was quite sufficient of two airplanes. Today, of course, planes are much bigger, such as this F-14 right here, that cannot fly off of their ship. It's too big, too heavy. That's 70,000 pounds. And so consequently, as the airplanes got bigger, we became more rebel. Consequently, the last part of our life, we were a helicopter ship. We became a CVS. So we had helicopters and fixed-wing piston-driven aircraft. The hangar deck here is our armor deck. All aircraft carriers during the Second World War had wooden flight decks. And we have a wooden flight deck. So consequently, this is the armored steel that comes over. If a bomb comes through there, it'll hopefully stop here. Now we did the wooden decks for several reasons. One of which, weight. It's 60 feet from the water line to the flight deck. We had that this much weight up there. We would have had to lower the overhead here down to about 17 feet, which meant none of these planes could have been fitted. So the lighter gave us more room here. Because this is a very narrow hull chute, and so balance was a problem. So consequently, that's why we did that. Now, the ship has changed quite a bit since the First World War. We were commissioned in 1943. This ship was built in 13 months. From laying in the keel, the launch, ready to go. Absolutely incredible. Couldn't do that today. And not a single computer was used. We didn't have computers. We had slide rules. Anybody know what a slide rule is? You probably do. Now, the people with gray hair know what a slide rule is. <laughs> no, not the computer. I have a little gray. Yeah. Yeah. Like, they're fun. Look them up. Anyway, so consequently, approximately 20,000 people were assigned to build this ship. And yes, a lot of ladies did work on the ship. I've had a few come in and say, oh, women built this ship. No, not really. They were good, yes. And there were no labor negotiations. There were no there were labor unions, but no negotiations, no OSHA, none of that. You came to work, you did the job, you went home. And there was very little pay rate. I think this ship cost approximately $69 million to build in $19.43. Today that's about $3 billion. We've had some Okay, any questions? 
So the guy just told me that this plane here was in the movie Top Gun. So. It is, we understand for every hour in the air, it required 50 man hours of labor to do to make it. That's incredible. The F-18 that we fly now, for every hour in the air, it's approximately five minutes. So we learned, we had a great time, but keeping it in the air was very difficult. So this, I just took a tour of the um, uh, of the deck here that we're on, and I thought I would um, break away and try to talk about some of the things that uh, Joseph told me. This is called the uh, fan tail. I think he said fan tail. God, I already forgot. But he said this is where the um, men and women would, would recreate when there was no flying going on. Well, I wanted to show you the view we have here of San Francisco. And you can see the Salesforce Tower and then the Bay Bridge over to the right. And then look at all the cargo ships lined up waiting to come into the port of Oakland. And I think they're just stuck there because of COVID. The guy was saying they would dump garbage off this here too. Back in the day, they would take uh, their you know, wet garbage, vegetables, and stuff like that, and they throw them down the chute, and the chute would go by the propellers, and they'd chop it up. Supply ship over there. And the flight deck's right above it. All right, let's go. The next area I'm going to show you is the restoration area. This is the rear of the ship. So check that out. They're restoring this fighter plane. Pretty awesome. Like they sanded the whole outside. Eventually, we're going to paint it. This is the back of the USS Horn. Look at this thing. I bet this is a lift for bombs. It's got disc brakes on it. In this old, uh, I guess it's like a pusher. Toes planes. An old twin bicycle, too. Look at that bicycle. Little Sol's powder room sign. It's got a B powder in her face. Thank you. Now this here is a nine cylinder radial engine. And uh, uh, this uh, the guy said is ready, could go into a plane. Now it's running. And this gear would be where they put the propeller on. And I, and I believe he was saying one of the planes, you could, you could mate two of these together and make an 18 cylinder.
This one's in pretty great shape though, huh? Pretty cool. Now these are these are um, pistons going up and down in these all these and they're all attached to it's very complicated inside. Radial engine, nine cylinder. And look at these uh, signs. These are, I guess, it says the sign here says Hornet Sister Carriers. Donald Duck, USS Bunker Hill. And then down here would be an area we can't go into, but in the future, I'll come back and do another video. Check out this plane. They did a great job on this. It's got fresh paint job. Shiny black. Engine looks new. They totally restored it. This is called the S2E Tracker. By Gorman. Did an amazing job restoring these. I was talking to the guy, you know, this is a floating museum and COVID's really hurting them. They're really struggling to survive because they make their money off having parties and events here. And just like everybody else, that's, that ain't happening. <laughs> Someone put some teeth on it. You see that? Oh, that's funny. You can see it there, the control flight part. And these are all the guys doing the restoration work. The skill, I tell you. We got some of the ailerons here on the stage. And the podium. And the giant flag. Over here, they got, you know, this was involved in Apollo 10 and 11. Um, this is uh, part of the history here. See a little modern jet up there. And they got they even have a flight simulator. So they said this section of the ship is where they would throw events and parties. Torpedo workshop is down below. That's where the ghosts live. Right, here's another um, plane. Now this one, um, this one, the tour guide told me has two nine cylinders back to back, so it's an 18 cylinder plane. And interesting story too, that he also said that it was um, not very fast or powerful, but it had um, self-sealing uh, gas tanks. 
So the Japanese fighter planes, if I took a bullet, they were done because they'd leak gas and explode. And these tanks had um, had uh, actual rubber in them. So if a bullet went into the tank, the rubber would expand and seal the bullet, so they could take the bullet hole. So they could take um, bullets to the tank. And then behind the pilot was a uh, fortified um, area for him to sit in. That's a torpedo. He also said the torpedoes were fails. Out of every 10 that were um, launched, three of them would explode. Um, and the reason was is they, they didn't um, test live torpedoes. They only tested dummies. So um, they never tested live ones. So. It took them a few years to figure it out to get it more accurate. So I'm going to pan the sign about this. So if you want to read more detail, just pause the video. So, so in there is 18 cylinders. It's funny, by today's standards, these things look like enormous beasts. But back then, they were, um, you know, the best. This mural here, um, where all the planes that flew off the USS Hornet, it's set for, he was saying, the bomber here and the biplane. Every other plane in this picture flew off the USS Hornet. And he said one of the dosos painted this. Very talented. Look at these uh, munitions. Bombs. Uh, hopefully someday in this existence of time, there won't be any need for war. So these big doors here, you see these? Are, these are fire doors. So if there was a fire, they could um, block it off. And they'd go all the way along the rail. This is like some kind of training deal here. F-11, F-1, F-11A, Tiger. So front nose of one. There's a little something about the Apollo 11. Yeah. 
Again, just pause the video if you guys want to read this. So maybe they bolt this part onto the... I don't know. You know, I'm walking along and then I look up, look up, look above us. Got these giant, I don't know what they are, gas tanks maybe. There's one here. Looks like they might store stuff up there. Hey, thanks for coming along with me to check out the USS Hornet. That was pretty exciting. Lots of things to look at. A lot to explore. I'm definitely going to have to come back and do a more intense video. If you like what I'm doing, please subscribe to my channel. Um, if you have any comments, I had a couple questions in there about things I didn't know about. I'll leave some comments. And other than that, thanks for coming along with the USS Hornet. All right, bye.